When discussing the Fermi paradox, one of the major themes within it is the idea of a great filter, or something that prevents life from becoming a spacefaring civilization spanning the galaxy, some kind of stumbling block that no one makes it past. There are many potential great filters, some in the past, some in the future, and it remains uncertain if we or anyone else made it past them, or will get past them other than by sheer luck. But in our case we already flirt with eventual extinction with our activities on this planet. While nature has a few ways to cause our extinction, there actually aren't that many that we currently are aware of. Asteroids and comets, the brightening sun, being located too close to a gamma ray burst, and a few others, but the list is rather short. But as to causing our own extinction, there are some that are known and some that are unknown. The known ones are in actual fact well known. Nuclear war and so on have that potential, though not necessarily so. It's ambiguous, and we may be able to survive our challenges. But it's the ones that lay in our future and may be totally unforeseen that are particularly scary. It's no secret that we often have to blindly learn a lesson before we know something is bad for us. This extends throughout human history. Someone always has to be first. Sure, the first person to try a cucumber found deliciousness. But the first person that died from ingesting Atropa belladona discovered a deadly poison. Yet that would someday become the medication atropine, which oddly is used to counteract some types of poisoning. None of that could have been predicted by the original discoverers of the plant. That type of thing still happens. No one thought fossil fuels would cause atmospheric problems when we started using them. Same with air conditioners, freon, and ozone holes. So it seems likely that some of the technologies we are pursuing today may have ends that are completely unforeseen. No technology we are currently pursuing seems more likely to have such pitfalls as artificial intelligence and machine learning. These are not a big deal right now and are proving quite useful, but there may come a time where they may become increasingly capable and complex, leading to general artificial intelligence, which is in essence machine intelligent life. These are all scenarios we are all well versed in, both from science fiction and indeed science and engineering. We know that AI could be potentially dangerous. Many stories have been written and many scenarios envisioned including my own book Supermind. It could be our apocalypse or our greatest achievement, but in any case it will change our paradigms and how we view existence and life. We've done this before with nuclear energy, the internet, and so on. Speculation is good here because that's how we know how to prepare for the risks should we get close to making them reality. But there are also events, sometimes called black swan events, where something comes along that wasn't predicted by the futurists or anyone for that matter, and perhaps no one quite realized how culturally relevant they would be to the world at large. The cell phone is an example of this. I remember when they didn't exist, and the very first incarnations of them were huge, bulky packs you kept in your car in the 1980s if you could justify the costs and pitfalls of using them. Then we got flip phones, which were a sort of realization of Captain Kirk's communicator, but that was still a recognizable phone. Oddly, one thing I did not see William Shatner do when he went to space recently on a Blue Origins launch was open up a flip phone and dial home. There is something oddly satisfying, though, to a lifelong Star Trek fan such as myself to think that William Shatner, Captain Kirk, currently holds the record for the oldest person ever to go to space. But look at where cell phones went after the flip phones. They're better than Star Trek's communicators or tricorders. They became full-on computers and data access terminals far and beyond the flip phone era. For many of us, cell phones are our computers and access to the internet. And while that was all predicted to various degrees, it's hard to have predicted how integrated they would become in our lives. Even me, at 46 years old, while I often yell at my cell phone to get off my lawn, when a message comes through, I invariably read the message. I am addicted to my phone, as most of us are. It's a prosthetic brain. But therein is a spooky question. Can a technology come along, perhaps intended for another purpose entirely, that changes everything? The answer is yes, even today. You can think about things like direct brain-to-computer interfaces above and beyond something like virtual reality, but that's seeing the flip phone without predicting the smartphone. How that actually manifests as a technology remains to be seen, but it does get into some hypothetically spooky regions. A direct brain-to-computer interface would have immense utility in things like dealing with medical problems and disabilities. 
From a medical perspective, it's well known that this could be of great benefit. But as with anything, technologies can grow beyond their original intent and find uses in other areas, including entertainment. So a brain-to-computer interface might be an attractive option to some, to get the very most realistic gaming experience they can, even to the point of consciously living within the experience, and shutting out the real world as is practical. But don't let yourself get eaten by a real bear while happily communing with nature in your virtual environment. This leads to scenarios that I honestly don't think the average person is going to go for. We live in a world of hacking and cybersecurity, and putting the brain in that direct loop opens up beyond Orwellian scenarios of changing people's thoughts, hacking their minds, and altering their perceptions and even how they think. Losing control of brain-to-computer interfaces is probably even worse than the idea of losing control of a generalized AI, and I don't think people would take that step en masse. Some will, for sure. There's always someone that will climb Mount Everest and then go to Mars, or someone that will get wild cosmetic implants and body mods and so on, but most people don't. But at the same time, we're not that far along. Even a cell phone. Even if you were to go back a century and a half and hand a cell phone to Herman Melville, he might not understand how it works, but he could read the words on the screen. If he can't tell you what it is, he could tell you what it is not, and might say that cell phone is not a whale. But all these layers of technology that we're adding to society take us further from nature. What do you feel when your electricity or internet gets interrupted? Frustrated is the usual answer. Did you feel the same when you were a kid? I didn't. We didn't have the internet. And if the electric went down, we lit candles. Deprive me of the internet today, however, or electricity as sometimes happens, and my modern self is instantly bored and lost. And therein is the problem with advancing technology. The further you move forward, the less of a connection you have with how things were in the past. Comparatively few in the developed world still know how to practice subsistence agriculture, knowledge that was once crucial to humanity. This disappears more and more as we industrialize agriculture. But if that fails, could that be a great filter? Is the loss of knowledge on how to survive under the natural conditions of your planet a game changer? It may well be even to the point of extinction. Now push all of this forward. If we significantly continue to alter the planet to suit our needs, as in full-on continued terraforming, does that open up a civilization to even more risks of extinction? Take Mars. We would need to do a great many things to make it habitable for humans. All of those things would be artificial, and thus, if any link in the chain fails, then the natural harshness of Mars comes back in full force. Are the pitfalls of advanced technology themselves a great filter? Or how about isolation after a massive disaster like an impact event? What effects does that have? Say the asteroid hits, most people are wiped out, but the core group of humans that remain have no way to contact each other. In the past there were things like ham radio, where coordination could be done long distance, but that's disappearing. And we increasingly just talk to each other using the internet, which isn't likely to survive such a calamity. Could small groups of isolated humans be driven to extinction by that isolation? That may well be the case. But there's also even spookier unknowns. We don't have a complete understanding of physics. We know parts of the puzzle very well, but there remains areas where there are unknowns. For example, how many dimensions does the universe have? We have no idea, and some theories such as variants of string theory suggest 10 dimensions of space and 1 dimension of time. Without knowing anything about these dimensions, it's difficult to say what, if anything, we could use them for. There may even be unknown physics that to probe you could inadvertently tap into some property of nature that is utterly deadly to your planet. In fact, there's one such fate that's even worse than that, and it may be possible. It's the idea of the universe itself tunneling to a lower energy state, if it's not already there. If you could somehow set that off, you could inadvertently end the universe and all civilizations within it. Clearly, if this were possible, it probably hasn't happened yet or we wouldn't be here. But imagine a civilization at ground zero setting off the reaction that then propagates out at the speed of light and no one sees it coming until it arrives. And the very matter you're made out of dissolves, and the laws of physics as we know them are replaced with altered laws that may not even allow matter to exist. Who knows what other extinction level pitfalls await us in the areas of science we do not yet know. Call it the universal trap. 
Thanks for listening. I am futurist and science fiction author John Michael Godier, currently addressing the conspiracy theories that I am either an artificial intelligence and Anna is real, or that I am an alien and just simply forgot. It can't be both. But I will say that I exist, but only because the Event Horizon Possum is staring at me keeping my quantum wave function collapsed and it's very tiresome. And on that note, there's a link below to a blast from the past, where my wave function was similarly collapsed by Fraser Kane in a debate about the Fermi Paradox a few years ago. You may have heard the debate on Event Horizon or Fraser's podcast, but what you might not know is that there is a video version of it over on Skylace's channel, link below. Be sure to check out my books at your favorite online book retailer and subscribe to my channels for regular in-depth explorations into the interesting, weird, and unknown aspects of this amazing universe in which we live.